that's my boy. You ready? Mom, Jay, you look beautiful. Thank you. Let's go. Yes. You seem to be forgetting something. What? Yes, my dear. Ooh. Apple and banana? Nah, apple and pineapple. All right, thank you. Bye, Sabra. Do have a good day. Thank you. This is where we draw the curtain on today's show. I really hope you have enjoyed yourself as much as I did. Till I come your way again, keep staying fly. But please join the conversation and follow us on all our social media platforms. Before I go, I would love to give a big shout out to my producer and all the guys behind the camera for keeping me so fly. See you guys tomorrow. Love you. God. How's that? That was fantastic, <laughs> if you ask. Thank you. So what I mean, a little bit of continuity will do magic. <laughs> I know, I know. You killed it, alright? But you know the executive producer would have wanted you to stick to the lines, right? Mm hmm So that's it. I'm just for construction. Okay, fine. I hear you. I have work to do. Pass me here, please. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I was on air when you were calling earlier. What's up? I can talk now. Huh? <laughs> He's funny. What? He can't, right? Wait, can he? a good paying job. Like I'm a team host for crying out loud. Can't the court see that? Mm, yes, yes, he's an hotelier and his girlfriend is a medical doctor. Do the maths. Ufoma. If he thinks he can take away my son, just because he's a godson to some stupid politician, he won't see what's coming for him. to manage. Alright. We're rolling five. Five, four, three, two, one, action. Hi. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of Muna Enchanted. Hi, Mom. Muna, where have you been? Have you worried sick? Um. Sorry, I was in the bathroom. Are you okay? I just missed your call. How are you? Good. And yourself? 
I'm fine. How is just Oh, he's good. Um mom can I call you back? Please. Oh. Eleven, what are you doing? I think it's best you just walk rather than jog. Um, I'm Tunde Pedro. Look, I appreciate you walking up to me and every other thing, but I really don't want any of this. Oh, it's for Giddy's gym. What? Giddy's gym, the needs gym in the estate. It should do some good. Oh, okay. I guess I'll check you out sometime. Yeah, you should, you should. It should do your body some good. So what do you drink? Not wine. What about champagne? Rose petal? Something a little less whistly, less greasy maybe? <laughs> your show. It ended like two hours ago. I said sorry. I hit traffic. Anyway, what's up? What was so important you couldn't discuss over the phone? Henry's lawyer called. He wants Jason's custody. <laughs> That's impossible. Can he? No, no. Uh-uh. There is absolutely no way I'm going to allow that nuisance get anywhere close to my son. If you would just calm down, I'll explain. <laughs> he has a strong case, Muna. He has a rewarding job and enough time to cater for Jason. That's the angle he's coming from. But to you, you barely have enough time for yourself. I hired a very good nanny to take care of my son. And I make sure I drop him off at school every morning. And do you also pick him up from school? What are you driving at? Henry is as deadly as his feisty. He has some influential people backing him up. CEOs, politicians. Military. I know all of this, but I really need to know what you're trying to get at. Oh, what? What do you want me to do? I should just give up my son just because he has some powerful people in political office? 
Everything in this part of the world is politics, Mona. You know that. And for the record, he is his son too. The question is, how do we give these sagging books a lift? For us to win this case, you have to quit your job. <laughs> uh, now this, this is insane. <laughs> how, how is this even possible? How? That's the question. He's saying that you're on air all day and you barely have enough time for your son. Reason for his request for Jason's custody. That's a very strong and realistic accusation, I must confess. So because I give him a divorce and I refuse to quit my job as a TV host, he decided to bring it around to spite me. Talk to your producer. There could be a way you could push up your show or something. Yes. Come on, let me buy you lunch. No, it's okay. Thanks for having me. You know, he really thinks he's smart. But I will let him know that I am smarter. Because two years after divorce, two solid years, and he's yet to give me an early money. Okay? Come here. Thank you. Okay, but I'm watching you, Mita. Oh God, now one, no, no. Ah, it's complete. Okay. Hi. Miss Mona Edozi. I need your help. Um. At this point, you're the only one that can save me, please. I need your help. Yeah. I don't need your money. I need your help. Please help me. Madam, please move away from my car. Please, I need your help. And you believe I follow another category? <laughs> you have no idea what is possible. I'll make him regret that cheap stunt he pulled. 
Why ever thinking of trying to take my son away from me? He's gonna regret it. Muna, calm down. You're just too stubborn. I think you two should talk. Eh? Mommy, this will never happen. Like, not in this lifetime, not in the next. Like, that, that damn nuisance cheated on me. Even sold my brand. Like, no, no, it's not happening. How are you? I'm fine. How is my grandson? He's doing okay. I just um, had his bath and he's in bed. Please say me well to him and make sure you put him on the phone tomorrow. It's been long I saw his face. Okay, I will. Mona, you need to speak to Henry. You two need to talk about this and come to a logical conclusion. Mom, I'm already in talk with my lawyer. And as far as I'm concerned, we have a very strong case. So I'll just leave that alone. But let me, I'm going to bed, Mom. We'll speak tomorrow, okay? All right. Good night. Okay, good night. I need your help. Um, At this point, you're the only one that can save me, please. I need your help. Yeah. I don't need your money. I need your help. Please help me. Madam, please move away from my car. Please, I need your help. It requires a lot of energy. There you go. Thank you. I almost had my punching back to the emergency room. What happened? Really? Is this how you question your clients? You're going to lose a lot of clients, trust me. Actually, no. I'm just being concerned. You know, because without my clients, this place will collapse. You on the place? <laughs> it's not obvious. Congratulations. I mean, I'd have loved to stay in chats, but I have to take my leave. I've been a gym instructor for the past six years until I was able to afford this place. And I know what it means for a lady to be hit in the punching bag just like that. So, what's the problem? We can spill. You're safe. It's my ex-husband. He wants custody for my five-year-old son. And it's looking like he's going to get it, saying that he he's a godson to some corrupt politician. 
Yeah. Bigger than you thought, right? <laughs> um, I uh, broke up with my ex-wife a year ago, like last month. Imagine on my birthday she came with a man who happened to be her husband on the side for the past six years. <laughs> and they had two kids together. What? And with the rest. No, that's deep. Yeah, that was deep. I don't like deep though, but <sighs> that was very deep, but yeah, it was like deep. No. <laughs> no I don't Yours is like, like that. I'm just playing with you, okay? Come on, but yeah, I mean that was deep though. <laughs> okay, now that's too much. <laughs> no, man, I'm not fooling you. Anyway, this is really good. Yeah, okay. So, is that why you took it out on the fortune bag? Yeah, just had a lot on my mind actually. Um, well, if you insist, we met at a friend's wedding. Um, he was his friend's best man, mm -hmm. and. He was giving the best man speech and couldn't get his eyes off me. It was love after two glasses of champagne. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't really know each other that much. Um, and shortly after we got married. Okay. Hello, Mona on the line. Please, Ma, where can I see you? Who is this? I'm at the gate of your estate, but the guards won't let me in. Yes, hello, what's the problem? There's a pregnant woman here asking to see you. She doesn't even know your address and cannot show her appointment card. Do you see me? A pregnant woman? I'm sorry, ma. We can't let them in without an appointment card signed by you. I'm sure you know the rules of the estate. Uh, yes, I yeah, do. It's okay. Um, of course I understand. Okay, just have a wait for me in the restaurant across the road. I will join her in 45 minutes. Alright, thanks. Oh. If I hear you right. You said the man who kidnapped you and raped you also killed your husband.
I still don't see why you're telling me this. But the only reason I agree to meet with you here today is to tell you to stop sending me those messages on my social media handles. It's disgusting. And look, if you think it's because you see me on TV every day that you can blackmail or extort money from me, check the next door. Stand up. Stand up. Get up. Get up! What do you want from me? I want justice. What's his name again? Bankoli Beckley. Saturday, are you forgotten? Oh, I'm so sorry, okay? I have a lot to do. He's an abuser and he's a thief. He does not deserve to be alive. Bankole Beckley. What's funny? Are you really asking me that question? You've got to be kidding me. What's wrong with that? Everything is wrong with that. So you want me to sue an elder statesman, a powerful politician, a philanthropist, 
All because one God-forsaken miserable woman coerced you into believing that she was raped. Huh. You don't understand. <laughs> You're right. I don't understand and I don't want to understand. Like I looked into her eyes like I felt her pain. It yearns for justice. That woman, her husband was murdered. He was murdered in cold blood. What has that got to do with you? Seriously? <laughs> Mona, people get mobbed. People get raped. People get murdered every day in this country. <sighs> this is a multi-billionaire we're talking about here. Chief Bankole Beckley has everything at his beck and call. He's a powerful politician, a voice. He means something. He's a legend. If you try to sue him, people will only assume that you're pulling a publicity stunt. And I'm pretty sure you don't want that. You're a TV presenter, a celebrity in your own right. Stick to that. Who are you? <laughs> Where are you going with that? It's because it seems like I don't understand you anymore. That it's... woman needs our help. This is beyond us. <sighs> God is our helper. Ufuma! Really? Go home, it's late already. Drink plenty of water and sleep. Or do you want to come in for a second? I thought as much. Good night. some money into an offshore account which he refused because if the deal was uncovered he could get sacked. He sent him a threatening text message. I saw that message just before he invited him over for a secret meeting. That night when he got back home Just before he could say anything to me, he started vomiting. He was foaming. He eventually died before we got to the hospital. Chipankoli poisoned my husband. He killed my husband. 
when the autopsy report came up, he said he had died of a cardiac arrest. But I know that is a lie. We found out the doctor was friends with Chief. He killed my husband. You said your husband used to work for him. And you said your husband used to work in a bank. Yes. Can you elaborate on that? I'm kind of confused. He was a banker. He managed the bank all his accounts. Mm -hmm. Must have been very rich when he was alive. That is not quite the story. Oh, tell me about that. He managed his legit accounts. And when funds were transferred into the account mistakenly, that was when he found out about the fraudulent activities with other politicians. He was about to resign from managing the account in the fear of losing his job. Or chief poisoned him. Poisoned him? How sure are you? Ufuma. Were you there? Ufuma, can I see you for a minute, please, outside? Please give us a minute. Please. If I knew that was what you called me for, I would have stayed back in my office. This is serious. Well, for you, this is cynical. Sheer lie. Mm. You're a legal practitioner. Excuse me? Are you out of your mind? This isn't just a case. It's a case of murder, fraud, and rape. And don't forget, she's accusing a politician contesting for a senatorial seat in the next election. This is insane. Mm -mm, she isn't. She has no evidence. What kind of case is that? I could tell from her eyes that she's lying. Mm, you're wrong. Of course I'm wrong. Coming here was wrong. Answering your call in the morning was wrong. Now, if you will excuse me, I have something better to do. Ufuma. What is really wrong? Everything is wrong. We're in the middle of fighting for Jason's custody. And all you could think about is suing a politician who is as powerful as the president. Mona, rethink! He came by my house a month after the burial. I was alone. I knew something was wrong, but I couldn't help it. I had to play along so as not to get killed. Please accept my sincere condolences for the loss of your husband. He was a very good boy to me. I miss him. Oh, have I told you how amazing you look today? You look so amazing and beautiful. You know, from the very first day, Chris introduced you to me as his wife. I find my eyes on you. And I wonder what's a beautiful girl like you doing with a loser, an imbecile like Chris. Then I said to myself, I said, Bankoli, love is blind. See? Love is blind. So come on, come here. Stop this, please. See? Neniola, see, if you are mine, I will make you the most powerful, most feared lady in the States. You, know, you own your own courtyard, have your own boutique, 
and whatever else you want, I give to you. Oh, and you only cook two or three times in a year because you have um, maids and servants to do all that for you. But if you don't like my offer, I'll take it somewhere else. Then you'll be useless to me. Totally useless. Hmm? No. I said no. You call the pilot and tell him we are not coming tonight. Yes, sir. Leave me alone. You are just as fiercely as your husband. Leave. Now. To this. Four play, first play. It's your choice. So come here. See, all I ask of you is one night. Give me one night, and I'll put the word in your hand. I will sign over anything you want to sign over to me. Now, please come here. Ow! What did you do? You keep getting dumber and dumber like a day. If you keep going on like this, you will waste a life away. You wasted this. <laughs> Hold this <man. laughs> That's quite a pathetic story. So, did you call the police? Apparently, Chief won't stoop so low to come to my house or rape any woman. Is he responsible for the pregnancy? No. I found out I was three weeks gone the day my husband. It was supposed to be a surprise. But they took him away from me. He was all I had. All. He was my world. He was my life. They poisoned my husband. Sure, you that they killed your husband. I won't be as gentle next time. And if you choose to be an asshole, I'll send you to where I sent him. They always want to do this. There no such thing has been known. I mean, let's do it. I'll do out the paperwork tomorrow and then um, we'll charge him to court. As you know, the show is proudly brought to you by Zephyr Travels. On this show, we will be discussing every content. Gossip, gist, everyone and everything that's worth discussing. Don't move a muzzle. I'll see you right after the break. Cut. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. I need you to take it from here mm -hmm. down to here. Okay. Got it? Sure. Right. We're rolling ten. Okay.
Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, and action. Hi, welcome back. In case you're just joining us, relax. You haven't missed out on anything, as we are just about getting started. On today's episode, we will be discussing sex, love, and loss. How about we talk about justice, politics, rape, and the law? Justice. Justice is a big business. Politics? It's a big issue for those who play by the law. <laughs> and the law. Rape. Rape is an illicit act that should be punishable by the law. But it's unfortunate that so many celebrated artists, politicians, so many big men practice this illicit act and walk away scot-free. I, I am here today to talk about a man. A wicked man running for a seat at the National Assembly in the next general election. God. God. Mother. Mother, what was that about? Do you want to break the internet? I don't know what you're talking about. You just started an unusual conversation. Do you know the power of this show? Mother, everyone out there will want to know the exact person you're talking about. You host the most powerful show on this channel. You don't just say anything. Mona, you should have stuck to the script. You know this better, Mona. Why do you choose to mess up today's show? Why? I don't even know what the executive producer would do to me today. Jeez! Again. <laughs> what are you doing here? Um, I don't the place. Um, okay. It's nice. I see you're doing very well for yourself. Yeah, we'll try. Yeah. Thanks. Um, you plan on opening a restaurant too? Well, it all depends. But for now, we're still like we'll do some tests, and, and uh, if our customers actually like the idea, sure, get the business. Okay. If you don't mind me asking, what are you doing here? If I didn't any better, I'd say you came here to look for me. Really? Oh come on, just admit it. <laughs> no, sure. I came here to cool off. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Well, what happened to you on the show today? Because uh, it was kind of uh, inconclusive. You brought up this very sensitive topic and... What happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. Everything is fine. I find it hard to believe that. I said everything is fine. Just some technical glitch, but um, it's sorted now. Mm. I will be back on air tomorrow. Okay. Amen. Mm. I still don't believe you though. Hey. Miss Muna Duzian, do you know what time it is? It's uh, almost 11. Well, it's 2 a.m. over here. 
Are you busy? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I was thinking, you know, you might want to talk. About? I just had a really rough day at work and I was hoping I could have a little bit of your boy time. <laughs> boy time? Mm -hmm. Seriously? You expect us to go hang out at 11 p.m. in the crime capital of the world? I'll be waiting for you right at my gate. Sir, yes. that's a house. She's a single mother and divorced. Well, that much I gathered from the Wikipedia. Did you find out anything else? No, sir, for now.
I'm good. How are you? I'm good. The phone call? Yeah. I know. People are used to text, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. I like my text. Thank you. Ah, uh, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, for what? Why thank you? The chocolates. The one you sent to my office. What chocolates? You didn't send it? Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't send anything to you. just so now. What? Pink Evil has encamped my perimeters. What are you talking about? What's the problem? Is there a problem? Talk to me. I need you to come to me ASAP, please. Call it Beckley. I want to pick my son. Your son? Yes. I thought you sent your brother to come pick him up. Uh, what? Ma, as you can see, the school has closed and we don't have any students aside from the boarding students. Uh, um, please, Oga. Can you describe this man for me, please? He's tall, dark and handsome. And you allowed him to take my son? Ma, I, I thought he came with a letter being signed by you, ma. And I tried to call you, but your your number was switched off, ma'am. See, I'm going to come back and I'm going to sue all of you in this place. How can you just allow Shunda to come and pick my son? Let me just not find my son and see what I'm going to do. Good nonsense. Is there anybody who just called you? Um, hi, Harry. I know this might sound really weird, but please, 
Did you pick up Jason from school? Jason? Yes. No. What have you done to my son? dropped him off um so guys they said they work with you at the office i tried calling you but your number was switched off i was scared initially but My then number. they didn't bother coming in before going what's going on Muna. there's a problem They hacked into my phone, and I still don't know how they got into my apartment. This is it, Mona. I'm out. I'm still young. I want to love. I want to be loved. I want to get married to the man of my dreams and have my own kids someday. I won't let someone truncate my dreams and aspirations. Look at me. I'm here because my home has been sabotaged. Just calm down. Okay? Stop telling me to calm down. You have no idea what's possible in this country. Everything in this country is politics. I'm sorry. I am really sorry for dragging you into all of this with me. Okay? You're sorry? Yes. You're sorry? That's all you keep saying. I want us to withdraw this case. What? You heard me. I'll start the process first thing tomorrow morning. And with that, we have come to the end of today's show. See you tomorrow and keep staying fly. Hot. to bargain, or rather, we gave you an offer you cannot refuse. It's a once in a lifetime offer. My name is Chief Beckley, Bankole Beckley, 
and I'm running for a seat in the Senate. I'm coming to represent the good people of my senatorial district. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> amazing, man! <laughs> Now, why do you want to ruin that for me? Hmm? Why? So I know what this general is back in the days. I can't even remember his name now. He was famous. Humanitarian he was. And I loved human rights activists. See? He loved the people of this country, the citizens, so much. And he started to attack the political office holders of this nation. Do you know what happened to him? No. One day he received a, a letter in the mail. And as he made to open this letter so as to read it, Exploded. Dead. Just like that. They were called who killed him? See, now that scenario I'll bring for you. A human rights activist was murdered in cold blood. In his own case, he interfered in a case more delirious than him. His murderer is still living large as we speak. Straight to the point, please. Ah, just like I thought. Bold and beautiful too. I want you on my team, on my campaign team. See, I figure a beautiful, bold, and intelligent young lady like you will do wonders to my campaign. Don't get me wrong. Victory is assured for me. But something to upgrade your status. What do you say? I would like to tell you a breaking news. Are you interested? Entertain me. Good. Earlier today, one of my opponents died. I would like to report to you that he died honorably, with dignity, but no, he didn't. His death was that of crying and weeing on himself and, and poo pooing on himself, and begging, offering exchange, whatever, exchange for his life. Do you know more than him? No. It is sometimes the answers we seek is right in front of us. Hey, <laughs> uh, I do say. Any blood relative of yours will die within the year. It will die a slow and painful death. Why we are there watching? Because they will save yours for last. Don't blame me. 
That is the area where they excel. And then you will die slowly and painfully knowing that you have woefully disappointed them. How about that for entertainment? <laughs> I will see you in several days. Close the case. Not all revenge requires justice. Mm -hmm. So, 
Sorry to disturb. Sit. Sir, please. Looking for this? <laughs> you know, I actually wouldn't need this, so you can come and have it. How did you get in here? Sit. Back on the seat you asked. You've been a very bad man. Bad, bad. And you've not been very good to your cook. <laughs> yep, after I told her what happened to your accountant and his family. If she was convinced to poison your guards and grant me easy access. Now that is not possible. <laughs> ah, you have no idea how much things are possible. And you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Have you forgotten who I am? Oh, please shut up! You know, the place that we choose to inhabit, where we choose to live, is our own ecosystem. And you know, ecosystem gets disrupted when there is no balance. And when there is no balance, we have chaos. Injustice, unfairness, and you have that balance. Yeah, Mona. It's always the case of bad guys killing worse guys. You think doesn't happen in this part of the world? <laughs> oh yes, it does. You know, I have seen that happen a million times over. Unfortunately, you are in my world, and in my world, I am allergic to injustice. In this country, in this country, the cake has been divided, shared all the way down to the cross. Mona, you take what you can, when you can. I didn't design the system. I only learned to use the system, play it so I can win too. Listen, I have $30,000 in this room. You can have it. You can have it and stop chasing this, my soul, you desperately want to destroy it. And you can always come back for more. You know, there are some things better than money. Things like justice, fairness. And you know what sets you apart, what makes you more evil than the monster that's living out there? Is that you are wicked, you are a greedy man. You think about no other person, no other thing other than yourself. You are a very poor man. You don't have nothing. And now, you want power. You're getting it all wrong, Mona. Come on, let's back Oh, sit! Sit down. You know, life is a fight. But not everyone is willing to fight. And unfortunately for those who are willing to fight, they lack the right weapon. So, what do you want? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's best to respect our neighbor's wishes rather than trample on top of them. <laughs> I don't want to see your face by tomorrow. You won't gain anything by my death. You know, there's bad guys come, bad guys go. There's garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, you know, 30 days ago, you paid a visit to my office. You left a rather threatening message, which I won't lie, I appreciated. I just hope you appreciate mine today. You know, you made a mistake coming to my office that day. Oh, yes. 
because my office all wired up. So I have your confession on tape. Yeah, I do. So every little thing you said that day, everything you've done, I have them all. Not that as much. I would like to tell you a breaking news. Are you interested? Entertain me. Good. Earlier today, one of my opponents died. I would like to report to you that he died honorably, with dignity, but no, he didn't. His death was that of crying and weeing on himself and, and poop on himself and begging. Offering exchange, whatever. Exchange for his life. Do you know more than him? No. He says sometimes the answers we seek is right in front of us. I'm sure you wouldn't want the whole Federation to see how bad you are. I mean, what will your son say? Your son that still doesn't have it. Or wait, your first daughter. The one who works at Megs and Mills Publishing Company in England. What do you want, Mona? Good. I'll give you two options. One. Oh, before you do, I need to let you know that whatever you say, whatever decision you make, will either make or my. You know, I once read in a book called Meditation, where it says, if you expect a bad man not to act bad, he must be mad. You cannot kill me, Mona. I will. As a matter of fact, you know, I thought about 50 different ways to kill you, but I won't. First option. I'll walk out that door without killing you. But by morning, the whole Federation will know how wicked every evening. Two. You will sleep peacefully on that bed. You will die with your dignity intact. No one, no one will hear of what you've done. They will create a very huge statue for you. Something better than what you actually look like in real life. You know? Your children will also commemorate you. And? Good. Here's your glass of wine. You drink it. And sleep peacefully. Of course you die in your sleep. But nobody. I promise you nobody will know of your evil deeds. By morning, I will destroy all the tapes and you die with your dignity intact. You choose. Choose. The time is ticking. Tick.
How can you tell me you cannot find the killers of Chibankole? In case you have forgotten, we are talking about a strong political figure who is also the senatorial aspirant of the ruling party. And as such, the commissioner of police and the inspector general of police are interested in this case. We must find the killers of Chibankole at all costs. Inspector Mike, do all you can to find the culprit. I don't want to hear stories. Sir, we are trying our best. Your best is not good enough. And if you know you cannot do this job, you tell me and let me get a more competent officer. I'm very sorry, sir. I don't need your apologies. All I want is resort. Now you go after the culprit. Yes, sir. told you had moved out of town. Yeah. So when I saw your message two days ago, I was wondering, is this Miss Mona or is this someone else? <laughs> it is me. I mean, you know, I had this gig with Fox TV, okay. so I had to relocate with my husband and my son. You're married now? <laughs> yes. Oh, that is such great news. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, what are you doing here? Um, I'm here for my friend's wedding, actually. Um, do you remember her, Ufoma? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's her wedding next weekend, so that's why I'm here. Oh, oh, that's so great to do. So oh, great to see you again. Good to see you, too. How have you been, and how is your daughter? How's your baby? She's great. Oh. Would you like to meet her? I can tell the babysitter to bring her. No, 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 it's fine. I mean, my love to her, okay? What's her name? You see, uh, when... After I was delivered of my daughter, mm -hmm. I got a parcel from God knows who, and it had $30,000 and the notes that read Get a Life in it. So I was beginning to wonder, probably it was you. I mean, interesting, interesting. Back to my question. What is her name? <sighs> Lady Johnny Johnny. <laughs> her name is Mona. Sure, sir. Situation report, sir. What is the situation report? I got a call that Mrs. Muna, Chief Bankoli's killer, is back in the country. And we have made plans to apprehend her. Mm, that's good news. So where is she at the moment? The suspect just left the building at Royal Villa Estate, where she went to meet her friend. Mm. What next? We got a cell phone number, and the inspector bid to call her in disguise for help while we apprehend her at the music box. Mm, that's good. Good job. Okay, get a team to be on standby in case the suspect tries to be any funny. No worries, sir. I'm wondering at 20 percent on this one, sir. Good. So go get your team. Sir. <laughs> 